You want to sit on a pillow? Hi. <laughs> Here, wait. What? Here, I want to put a pillow under your tush. Oh, okay. There you go. Sit down. Thanks. You're welcome. Do you have a pillow under your tush? I do. I'm good. Hmm. You don't have to check. I'm good. Get your hand off there. No, you just have a white pillow. I have a gold pillow. You have a pink pillow. Do you want another pink pillow? You want to make yourself taller? Yes. Okay. Can you get on that? Ooh, oh, that's good. I Do you like that? Yeah. That's good. Okay. Okay. Is everything ready? I think so. I'm going to turn this a little, though, so that you're in the more in the middle there. How's that? Good to go. Okay. So let's say hi. Wait, we didn't even figure that out yet. Oh. Oh, no. All right. Oh, no. Uh. <laughs> okay. Wait, this doesn't go here. Wait, this doesn't go here. That doesn't go there. This doesn't go here. Okay, wait. I'm trying to put everything out. We got a lot of stuff here to talk about. We got them here to talk about. <laughs> and we have to move them all so they wouldn't be in our way so we can talk and say hi, everybody. We have to get everything ready. Oh, okay. Should we let them see us get everything ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We have them. Okay. All right, so I'm going through my bag right now. And I'm going through this. Oh, I forgot about that bag. Hand it over, lady. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I want to show them first. No, no, we don't show it yet. Oh. Oh. We need to get everything ready. Darn. <laughs> okay, this is from Ryan Beck. This That's is from the. This is from the bazaar. Oh. It's from the Untangled. What? There's nothing in there yet. Don't show it. Oh no, she's falling over. Okay, wait. We need to put something in there. What are we gonna put in there? I don't know. Um, how about this? Should we put these two? Uh, no. Do you think they're a Brio Duo? Let's see. Don't show. No, no. Don't show it. Do you think they're a Brio Duo? No. Oh, okay. All right, well, what about these two? Mm. Is that a Brio Duo? Yeah. No. No? No, Dad. We need some matches. What about this and this? Um, yep. You like that? Yeah, I like the okay. circle. Okay. I'll need the circle. All right, put it down. Put it on there. Pull, you gotta pull it up. It's the balls are fun. You're not even on camera. Okay, all right, we're good. We got our real duo of the week, right? We're good? Yeah. Ball jar's full. Okay, here we go. Sit next to me. Come on, come on. All right, ready? Okay. Hey. Hi. Hi. Um, hello, everybody. <laughs> Say, welcome to Gemma Darling Daily. Welcome to Darling um, Daily. <laughs> this is uh, season three, episode ten. Mm -hmm. This is the Ryan Beck recap. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff, yeah. So, and we're doing podcasts because you are a minute. Because what? Because this is Senate. I don't know what that was. Okay. And we just have some yarn. We have a lot of yarn everywhere. Right? Do you like yarn? Yeah. You do? Just like this yarn. What do you do with yarn? We play with them. What do you do? We straw. She cuts it. I like to cut it. Yeah, I know. You like to cut it. And then I serve it to mommy. Oh, yeah. She serves it to me. It's spaghetti then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and But actually, there was pasta. It's pasta. Because I... Because I like pasta. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, you like pasta. Yeah, you like it a lot. Okay, so should we get started? Yes. Okay, so it is Sunday, October, I think today's the 27th. Yes, and I go to school so much. And I go this and open. Uh, okay. If we finish the right room, then we go and to the middle room. Okay, because there are school. three rooms, right? So you're in one room. Okay. But, the, you know, the, I think they want to talk about yarn. Yeah, but... You have pretty sparkles on your eyes. We talk out, after we talk out about my school, then we can talk about yarn. Oh. Well, Franny, I think that they came to talk about <laughs> yarn. I think they want to hear about how my trip to Rhinebeck was. Okay. Okay. Well, unfortunately, Franny couldn't go this year. Okay. So... I have to go to school one day, and see, I'll show you all my friends. No. And then I'll show them all to you. No. This is my podcast. 
So this is my <laughs> for Annie. But right. I'll show you lots of things soon. Okay. All right. Done. Well, let's start talking about Rhinebeck. Oh, okay? oh, oh! I hear you down. What is that? This is a ball of uh, like pee. This it, is it is a ball. Oh, I have lots of ball jars. This is a jar. A shaky. Okay. Okay. You said you were gonna help me, not take over. No. <laughs> you said you were gonna help me not take over my podcast. Oh no! <laughs> All right, wait. Can we do this? Let me do what I have to do, and then I will let you do some. Okay. All right. So this past weekend was New York Sheep and Wool Festival up in Rhinebeck, New York, and I got to go. And then we went to the farm. Okay, I'll tell them about that anyway. So. I took Sammy, she's three months old, and I took her, and on Thursday, I went to pick up Gigi. You know Gigi. Yeah. Yeah. She's my friend. She is your friend. And then we went up and drove up to Rhinebeck, because we like to go on Thursday, because there's no one really there yet, and you can kind of do some of your favorite things before the entire town gets overridden with knitters, and it's impossible to get around. So, we went um, to bread alone and got my avocado toast. She had a pastrami Reuben, which looked delicious. Um, thank you. And then we went to the knitting garage and then we went to Indie Untangled, which is in the Saugerties Performing Arts Center because we wanted to see Adela. Yeah. She's Lola's mommy. Yeah, she's Lola's mommy. Uh-huh. And we went to see her. She's from Lola Bean Yarn Company and she had just gotten there pretty late. Yeah, she's for Lola's company. Lola Bean. For Lola Maine. <laughs> Bola Bean. For company. Nola Bean Yarn Go. Okay. And so... Um, and then we got a bag of dates. Wait. We didn't get there yet. So they were still setting up. So a lot of India Untangled was set up. Sorry. And then I dropped Gigi off in this cabin in the woods. In cabin. It was in the woods. I'm not even kidding. Like, we got there and this groundskeeper knocked on my window and I was like, Woo. this is what horror stories this are made out of. Stuff. That was for my wedding dress. Franny, you have to let me do this. Mommy's wedding dress. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, so, I dropped, Gigi was staying with Adela, and I dropped her off at this cabin because we couldn't fit her in Adela's car. So I dropped Gigi off at this cabin. This groundskeeper came up to the door of my car and knocked on the window, and I was like, this is a horror movie. So he's like, oh, you are in the cabin, which is the last one down that crazy dirt road on the left. And I'm going to have to kick her out. <laughs> um, and so I kept going, Gigi, I'm not leaving you here. I am not leaving you here. And it was no joke. Black as night. It was There were no lights whatsoever. And we get to this cabin, and okay. it's gorgeous. And this is the scratch back. <laughs> and it's gorgeous. This is you have glitter on your cheeks. I have what? You have glitter on your cheeks. Oh, you have glitter on your cheeks. Anyway. Oh, I drop oh, her off, and anyway. she, says, <laughs> she says it looks beautiful. Anyway. She would not let me podcast without her. I apologize. So anyway, I finally was like, okay, I just have to leave her here. And I left her here and she said it was gorgeous. And I drove onto the front lawn because I was like, there is no way I'm letting you walk into this darkness. And so I literally drove up to the front door. And her tank. She's back. But she has agreed to be good. Yeah, and there's a bag. And there's something in it. And I don't know what's, this so mom's going to open here for me. So. Well, I was talking about Gigi. And the pretty cabin that she stayed in that I thought was really I, crazy. Mommy is my sister. I'm not your sister, but that's nice of you to say. It's, I do look young enough. Yeah. <laughs> Ow! My <laughs> earring! Sorry! That's okay. And me and Sammy are friends. We're both friends. Okay. Aww! I didn't even make her do that! Oh my god, this earring just hit something that is really hurting me in the back of my head. Oh, sorry. Okay. And just, it's a back. What did I say? <laughs> no! Stop it. All right, guys, I'm really sorry. If you did tune in to see a Rhinebeck recap, we are getting to it, okay? So anyway, I dropped Gigi off, and me and Sammy made our way back down this crazy dark dirt road and finally got back to the hotel, and then I went to the Wendy's drive-thru, and we went back to our hotel. And since it rained on my hair, 
which is nana citabile, I went and washed my hair. Isn't that riveting? And then yeah. And then we went to wash our hair when we was done making cookies. Oh, we did that today. So we'll get to that at the end, okay? Okay. And so, we should we start showing what we got? Oh, yeah. Okay, because so the next day was Indie Untangled. I had the time Hello. slot from 10 to 12, and I got there super, super early because okay. since I had Sammy with me, so we got stop, since I had Sammy oh, with me, you're driving me nuts, and you're driving all of the viewers nuts probably, but oh, you're adorable, but, so just sit still. Um, um, so I, I got there really early. Um, I need a cut. You need what? The cut. Alright, just give me a couple minutes, I'll give it to you, okay? Okay. So, I got there really early because I wanted a parking spot because I didn't want to have to use the shuttle because I'm not taking the baby on the shuttle without seatbelts and things like that. So, we did get a spot in the back, Sammy and I, and then we got online. And it was a really long line and it was cold outside. So, I saw the Chelsea Pearls and Nana, who is Christina's mother, Susan Joy, <laughs> She got me through the whole line and got me inside, and um, I did wait my turn to go in, but I still just wanted to be out of the cold because of the baby, and I really just didn't want her to get an earache. I used to get earaches when I was little. You never got earaches. Sorry. You were lucky. I'm sorry. Yeah. So anyway, then it was Indie Untangled, and since I had the 10 to 12 time slot, I got a VIP bag. And So let me show you the VIP bag. That's true. And look. This is the perfect blend yarn shop, and it's a really, really cute design. Do you like that? Oh, yeah. That's cute, right? And there's a red one, too. Yeah, this. well, this one's from last year. This is from this year. The blue one's from this year. See, I, but then... I like the red one. I like... Oh, you can have the red one. I got the red one, too. This is from last year. And I like the red ones all totally. Okay. And they're the And they had goodies in them, and everybody's booth put in a and little bit of a... this is a goodie. Everybody's booth put in. Oh, this is a goodie too. It is a goodie. I think we should open it. Should we open them? Yeah. Okay. But I can't open mine. I don't know what I put in it. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's a pen from Spruce Lane Designs. And I got a red yarn and I got a car. Okay, and this is from Marionated. See, my mother and I had I had two tickets, so I got two bags, but, even though my mother couldn't come. But, but um, Spruce Lane I Designs, did. see how pretty that is? And they gave us that pen in the little bag, and then there oh, was Oh, I got the same one, too. Oh, my gosh. And then Marionated put in and I got little this micro one. skeins, and they're from Marionated Yarns. See? Oh. Where's your skein? Where's your skein? Here you go. Okay. Where's your skein? Where's the yarn? What'd you do with the yarn? There it is. <laughs> See, so these are marionated. And I actually really like marionated yarns. I, that sounded and really what weird. Else but did you I do, because I showed you a lot of it from that I got from the New Jersey oh, Sheep and Wall. Show them your phone. Smile! Ah. Uh... Okay, so what else would you get? Here, show this one. This is from Leading Men Fiber Arts. Oh, this is from Leading Men Fiber Arts. <laughs> Leading Men Fiber Arts. Maybe and I really I like how they did it. It's arts. two stitch markers. You know, it's two smile. Two stitch markers. Don't repeat everything I say, please. Um, this is the Knot House Yarns. This is the Knot House Yarns. <laughs> and then we got a mini from Asylum Fibers. Can I show them something? Sure. Do you want to show them this? Yeah. This is a little notepad we got from Murky Depths. Okay, I'll show them. Okay. Will you open it? No, you just hold it up, see? Look, this is a notebook. Okay. See, look, this is a notebook. And from Plied Yarn Company, we got a ruler. Okay, so, um, Oh, sure. Okay. What's this? It says Plied. Plied. Look, a pied. <laughs> I think it's like a book, but it's not. <laughs> and then Casa Pinka gave us a little notebook. Can I show that? Don't be so grabby. Okay. They did got us a notebook. Hmm, that's cool. This is a house notebook with a cat up top of that room. Woodsy and Wild gave, don't be grabby please, a sticker and some stitch markers. Oh, and that's woodsyandwild.com. Oh, and a uh, yarny. And Onyx Fiber color. Arts. Ooh, I really like those colors. Are those not my colors? Those are my colors. I know. These are facets. This is a sticker. Wait, this is a sticker. 
from Neighborhood Fiber Company. It says can, Community. Can, can I peel a sticker? No, I really like this sticker. This sticker's going on my computer. Some stickers are important. And this is from Farmer's Daughter Fibers, and it is a 25% um, off coupon. Ooh, I just noticed that. This? I am so using this for a sweater quantity. And... <laughs> okay, and then what else? No, that, no, stop it. There's a lot of stuff in here. Look, Pancake and Lulu gave a little sample and a stitch marker. What else, what else, what else, what else, what else? I Knit San Francisco is coming out, and that was from One More Row Press, and they gave and us... And we got a card. Stop. And they gave us a uh, tape measure here. Okay. This is a really good goodie bag. I just want to try. You can play with that. Lola Bean Yarn Company gave us a Georgia Peach sticker, because we all know how famous her Georgia Peach colorway is. Look, and this is a tape measure. Twill and Print put in a vinyl sticker. Okay. Look at this. Look at all this. Okay. Fiber Space gave us a sticker. Okay, let me see. And this goes on your key ring so you can check gauge. Let me show them what you just showed. Franny, sit down, please. Okay. You're a really difficult co host. Okay. And then Espas Co put in this little key and fob the here. Which, let me take this out. And they showed us. We did show. I showed that already. You're just like, sitting on my leg and my leg's oh, wow. going dead. You're not as little as you think. Spostry Co. It's a project bag tag. It says this project bag belongs to. And it says if I can't bring my yarn, I'm not going. Oh. And I believe these might be on the Spostry Co. website. So if you do order from there, go for it. <laughs> oh, what's that? Can I have that, please? A clip. It's a pin. A pin. From Air de Lune. Oh, no, sure. There you go. I think that's everything. Is that everything? Yeah. That's a lot of stuff, don't you think? Yeah. What's your else with pajama shorter? pants on. I put crooked pants on too. You have crazy pants on. Guess who got you those pants? Who? My friend Vanessa. Vanessa? Yeah, look oh. at them. She got you these pants. There you go. <laughs> okay, what else? I don't know. Let's put this all back. We gotta put this back. Yeah. Right? Do us. Do it. Hurry! So anyway, if you were a VIP and you got the Tud to 12 Times slide, it is a little bit more expensive, and but you do get a gift bag with all of this stuff this from all of the dyers. Um, and most of the people that are present at India Untangled, which was, or I think it's totally worth it because you get in first, you get to see everything, you know, before it's been touched, which is always fun. And um, I know there was a lot of trouble getting tickets this year, and I was lucky enough to snag tickets to that time slot. I, my mother and I had, so we had two tickets and she couldn't go because she didn't feel good this weekend. So when I got there, I did sell the ticket to someone who had come and, and couldn't get oh, in. Oh, I did got so a pencil. It was used. I think I did got a pencil. <coughs> oh, that's good. I All right, did. put that back in there. There was also it. this knitted booties. It's a card, but it doesn't have a tag on it, so I don't know who did it. I don't know, but it's really cute. There's, there's no head. Well, there's no tag. There's no head. It was just legs. Okay, so that came in our bag. So you came, you got in, and they would give you your bag. And now we that's have, fun, right? I know we have find something else that we can show you. Okay, let's find some more stuff so we can and show you. And we have you. to fill it very, very quick. Okay. Can you calm down, please? Oh, yeah. We just made cookies. I think she's high on sugar. <laughs> um, so then there's what I bought at India Untangled. And this one, Mommy, just showed me. This is a back scratch. It is a back scratcher. So I have a lot of stuff up here and in the attic, this right? Is, this is your back is so, so dead. Your back is what? So, so dead. If your back is dead. If I don't dead. even know what you're saying. Okay, but let's put that away for now because that has nothing to do with yarn. Okay, so first stop when I got to India Untangled oh. was... I just, don't oh. get overzealous. I like Backyard this. Fiber Works. I want to show them that baby We're one. We're going to show them the baby one, okay? Backyard Fiberworks. Oh, no, I got baby. two skeins of DK. I wanted to get a sweater quantity, but I could not decide on a color. And since I am able to get that oh, a lot, I just grabbed babies. skeins that I really like. Two so. baby ones. Two baby ones. So we just had a little accident. Someone just banged their head. Are you okay? Okay, should we go on? You look so sad, Francel Pants. All right, but look what makes you feel better. <gasps> Okay, so it's Backyard Fiberworks. I got two skeins in DK. 
This is the colorway that I get in every weight. It's Orchid. It's the Backyard Fiber Company. Backyard Fiber Works. I love this color. Do you like this color? I do too. And then this color, which is called Blackberry. Isn't that pretty? I just really like the skein. And I know that like sometimes these things have to be reskeined, which is why they look striped. And, um, and I, for some black, reason I really, black, really black. don't show that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's talking about this skein. Sometimes they're reskeined, and I love the stripes on them, and so I bought this because I just think it was really a pretty purple. And again, I like to interview yarn before I buy a sweater quantity of something. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Okay, so Backyard Fiber Works in Blackberry, and I just, it's a beautiful purple. So they're not exactly a Brio duo, but I did grab them to swatch up and see if I want to make a sweater out of them because I do have a lot of sweaters in the queue and I have an idea for a design. Next, I went to Pancake and Lulu. That is the, see, ply, Pancake and Lulu. And I bought this really chunky yarn and this is called Pop at Nothing and it's a bulky single. And I actually bought two skeins of this, but it is part of our Brio Duo of the week, which we will bring out in a couple minutes. So I did not want to show you the two skeins. One is indisposed right now in our ball jar of Briosity. That does sound ridiculous when I say it. I like what are you doing? It's like either she's talking and driving me nuts or she's quiet and pulling stuff apart. And you want to show this one? Because next I went to Lola Bean Yarn Company, and what did I get? Baby. I got babies. Yarn she, babies. She got baby yarn because Sammy's my sister. She's my, you see, she's my little sister. Mm -hmm. And so Lola Bean Yarn Company. And Adela is just a kindred spirit. Like, I love her to death because look at what these are called. This one is 16 candles. I love flowers. Look, this is like on your back. It is. It's exactly the same. We'll show that. We'll show that soon, okay? Leave that there. And this one is called Pretty in Pink. And I love Molly Ringwald movies from the 80s. John Hughes classics. Um, yeah, they're definitely not politically correct if you watch them now. It's actually, it's kind of funny. Or nice to see how long we've, how far we've come. If you watch them, you're like, did they just say that? Yeah. But classics, Molly Ringwald movies, Pretty in Pink and 16 Candles. I was going to make this the Brio Duo of the Week. I don't know. But I do think they would brioche really well together. And anything that has Baby Lo on it, I will know it. Isn't she cute? Yeah. So cute. She's cute now. She was cute as a baby. She's cute now. What are you doing? Stop putting your feet on all my fabric. See, this is all my fabric. And since I don't sew and I just buy fabric, I have lots of fabric. Oh, that's pretty. Do you like that? Yeah. Okay. So what are you going to be for Halloween, Fran? I was going to be a French fry. You're going to be French fries? I want to be French fries. What am I going to be? Mom's going to be a hamburger. Cheeseburger. She's going to be a cheeseburger <laughs> with a lot of stuff. And then she's going to have a topping. So she would look pretty. That one it has. And a guy has it for Halloween. When it gets close to Halloween, then we're going to put our stuff on and get ready. And then we're going to make my pie. Then we're going to make my trick or treat bag. Oh, that's right. We are going to make you a trick or treat bag. If we go without the. You have to say trick or treat, and we're done. Then you say thank you. <laughs> All That's right. Well, we later on, maybe we can show them what we're gonna make your trick or treat bag out of. Oh yeah, let's make them from green. Okay, so let's show now, after um, we went to India Untangled, I think that's everything I got at India Untangled. So the orange, well... Wait, that's everything I got at India Untangled. Orange will be the brown, and the white brown will be the eyes, and the brown will be the circle, and the brown will be the mouth, and the, and the green, and the brown will be the handle. Oh, of my bag? Yeah. Of your bag? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, let's just, we'll come back to this. 
Okay? Okay. Okay, so come, stop taking my pad back. I want to. Stop, leave it. Leave it. Ew. Leave it. <laughs> okay, all right, so what next? I've got her, I've got her. Let's show stuff. Okay, what next? Well, why don't you show everyone your t-shirt? Oh, look, I'm still up. Here, come over here. Here, come over here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What is this on my head? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then you fly me back to my Stay right there. Okay, we're gonna go into the Rhinebeck Yarn Bazaar Whoa. now. Oh, you fell! <laughs> All right, come back. Okay, let me just sit. Get, let me just get everything ready again. Okay. So after the um, after India Untangled, and I had all of my shenanigans with all my friends that were working there, unfortunately you only get two hours to shop and then you had to leave. So I took Sammy and we went out to lunch with Vanessa and her mom and we had avocado toast at Bread Alone. That was two days in a row. Not complaining. Oh, and then um, oh, after that... Mommy, can you put them back? Sure. After that, I did go back to the hotel for a little while to regroup because with a three-month-old, I just wanted to make sure... You know, she she was really great. She slept all of India Untangled and most of lunch, and then um, I just wanted to give her some time to like you know Mama, stretch can out you and snack. The other one back. The what? To like the other fabric. This Here, one, this one with the first mm, one. Don't ruin them. So then I, w when I was done at the hotel, I said, okay, I'm gonna go over to the Rhinebeck Yarn Bazaar. I think I got there around four or four thirty. Can we make something out of these? Yes, for sure we can. Okay. Um. 4 or 4 30 and there was a line around the parking lot and, I, and it, it went pretty fast it wasn't bad it was just that since there were no time slots and like you didn't have a limited amount people were just staying inside because there was a lot going on inside it was really great like Alex Creates was there Amanda Solomon was there a Clinton Hill Cashmere was there the Wooliers were there um there was there was Lady Di Yarns was there Cake Yarns was there um and I want to show you some of the stuff that I got. So the first purchase that I made, I believe, was, let's see, from my friend, um, my friend Alyssa Baptista, who just recently opened the yarn company Cake. And she gave me this little tin full of um, tchotchkes. Life is short, can knit I, with cake. Can I Sure one. I mean, look at all this stuff that's inside this. This is really great. It's a keychain that has some. Um, okay. There's. Blue, what are these called? They're crochet hooks. Blue, uh, green, blue, orange, and pink. That's right. Very good. And these are great to have handy in case you drop a, a stitch. Measure. There is a tape measure. And then look at this. Measure. Look at these. A sweet. These are little Hello. stitch markers. I can't get it to focus there. There you go. Stitch markers. Mm -hmm. A tiny little set of snips. And look, they have a squared edge. Okay, show that one. Good for kids. Yeah. Good for kids. And this is Cake Wool Company. I won't use a big one then it will sell you only use a, a baby one. Okay. So she gave me this as a little gift. And look what I got. So this is, I got two skeins of yarn. Um, this is, oh, I have house. no idea what this is. It's not labeled. Look, I thought it was house, beautiful. Mommy. There's so a house one. I decided. Look, Mom, there's a house. Oh, there is a house on that. Yeah. See? It's a light pink, and it's just a really, really cool skein because, I don't know, it gets thinner and fatter and thinner and fatter, and I just think being held double with something is really cool. Feels, it feels almost like a cotton. I wonder if it's a wool. I'll have to ask. And then oh, I got, and it was really great about cake wool. No two skeins there. were alike. So you're going there for like your art the yarns. Pattern. And they were all different they types of bases. Of this, Excuse me. And then I'm going to put them in. I'm just going to apologize space. to you guys. I'm really sorry. When I don't know when I get Excuse all me. Can you just like, you know. I really wanted to do a podcast, and Andy has the baby, and I have her, and so that is what happens sometimes. I'm very, very sorry. This is very disjointed, but I did want to just show you guys what I got, so bear with me. She is cute. Annoying, but cute. Um, so then I got this from Cake. This is 100% silk tape, and she dyed it herself, and I thought it was really, really cute, 
And I knew I was going to Rhinebeck the next day to get some of Amanda Solomon's art yarn. And I have no idea because I don't usually knit with art yarn. So I have no idea what I'm going to make, but I've just started collecting it because it's gorgeous. And so everyone's making those Roy G. Biv cardigans. And I think I really want to make something like that. So I thought that was really cool. So, um, yeah, so Cake Yarn Company and I, oh, Cake Wool Company, sorry. And, um, yeah, check it out. I think it's so different. Alyssa's really doing a great job. She has an adorable family. She has um, a son that's, I believe, about 12 or 13, and then she's got twin girls and a tiny little boy named Dash who is fantastic and you need to follow her. And then after I went to Cake, I went over to my friend Becky at Clinton Hill Cashmere, and she and I have daughters that are born about a week apart. Her daughter Golda, which she calls Goldie, I got to meet, which was so cute, so cute. We were nuts though. We had babies at a yarn bazaar and it was nuts, but she was um, a phenomenal mom. She was feeding the baby. She was slinging yarn. Becky, you're fantastic. And then at the end, I realized I didn't bring any wipes with me. And I was like, are you going home? Can I have your wipes? And she gave me her wipes. So I am forever indebted because the baby puked all over my um, Felix sweater pretty much right after you left. <laughs> and then she just spit up on the mat. She, she does spit up on the mat a lot, yeah. And she just, so when she crawls on her She's tummy. not really crawling yet. She's doing tummy time. So I guess it's like pressing when on her. When she does tummy time, then she... <laughs> well, but you know, she doesn't, I mean, I, we do it like and hours then, after she's eaten to, to let it digest and it still is not. And but then another yarn. Look at this. Clinton Hill Cashmere, I got two balls of the navy. Kinsmores? Stop. Kinsmores. This is the good stuff. I mean, if you're going to. It is Sit down, please. <laughs> mm, it's my podcast. It's mine. <laughs> Ow! Don't pull my hair! Okay, so that's not nice. Don't do it on purpose, please. The blonde and the brunette trying to podcast. So, um, Clinton Hill Cashmere. I got this in, I forget, I'm trying to, I think this is the, um, the worsted, because she has worsted and DK. And I got it in the navy blue. And I got two balls of it because my friend Vanessa is coming out with a pattern for a shrug as soon as she can get it together. Um, and she is grading the pattern now, and we are all going to make it, all of us. And it takes two to three balls of Clinton Health Cashmere, so save your money because we're all going to make it. It's you, we Mommy, it's fantastic. If you don't one, follow Van Ray Knits, please do it. Why well, this one's much too. That looks nice with this, doesn't it? Maybe I should make a dress out of this and make a cardigan out of that. No, look. It, it does match. I'm going to show them in a second. That's my next thing to show. So that's my Clinton Hill cashmere. I like to grab a little bit here and there because it is very expensive. But, you know, if you grab a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit there, then all of a sudden you have a nice amount and you can do stuff with it. Okay? Can I do something? What's next? This is my bag. It has... Mommy, can I do something? Yeah, you can hold this up. You want to hold this up? This is from Tanny Casey. Okay. I'm going to hold it in front of your face then. Yeah. And I love no, this bag. I want to do something with all this stuff. Well, okay. You want to go do something? Go ahead. Okay. 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 So, this is from Tanny Casey, and it is a really big bag. Like, it is a there really, you know. really big bag. No, no, I don't want that. Enjoy. Thank you. I've always wanted a Crystal Tiffany bowl full of cut yarn. Oh, okay. I'll go with you some more. Make me some more, thanks. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, it's really great leather, guys. Look at the leather on these straps. It's fantastic. Don't move my lighting. This is the worst podcast ever. Okay. Um, I'm trying to get down into this so I can show you the her name on it, but it's pretty far down into the bag. There you go. Can you see that? Okay, so Tanny Casey. She had, she was sharing a booth with cake and the bags were gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I couldn't hardly get by with the stroller, so I grabbed one and I put my credit card in the air and I said, who works here? I want to pay for this. And so someone grabbed my credit card and then I took the bag. <laughs> so that's what happened there. So this is my Tanny Casey bag. And, um, I really, really love it. I saw Christy was wearing one, I think, at the um, New Jersey Sheep and, and Wool. I really, really like that credit card. She's going to learn how to use my credit card. And um, 
I knew I wanted one, and I was really glad that they were at the Yarn Bazaar because, I mean, if you saw all of the, I didn't even get a chance to look at everything. Because I had the baby with me, I was kind of just grabbing a couple things, not really shopping per se. So I'm glad I got one. But guys, I'm telling you, go to the website and get it because they're beautiful. And that was the Yarn Bazaar and India Untangled. That was Friday. We're going to go into the, um, the Knit Night. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. First, I want to do the Brio Duo of the Week. Really? Okay, somebody, let's just take five. I'm just taking five. Okay, we're going into the Brio Duo of the Week. And this week in our Bell Jar of Briosity, let me just put them back in here because... I had one balled up, but I remembered I had one skeined. Um, we're going a little loud with the colors this week. So this is our Brio Duo of the week, um, post Rhinebeck, which I was, I think we were getting a little bit, you know, into the, the fall colors, but I found this beautiful pink skein at Indian Tangled with Pancake and Lulu, and I remembered that I had something at home that would go great with it as a Brio Duo. So this is, again, Pancake and Lulu. And it's like such a, it's, it's like the color of my childhood. It's like I used to have nail polish colors, like hot, hot, hot pink, right? And this is called Pop It Nothing. And then this is... Mom, can I get the babysitter? Sure. This is String Thing Studio in My Little Pony. I don't want to use the big, big grown-up thing. I think I said that wrong. It's Stitch Together Studio. I don't want to In My use, Little Pony. I, and. I don't where was I before I had a mommy meltdown? This is My Little Pony. It's from Stitch Together Studio. Um, and again, this is like the color of my childhood and My Little Ponies are just my childhood. Um, even though they've been revived, they are not new. No. So I thought this colorway was really, really pretty on these bulky, bulky singles. And um, I did actually start a blanket out of this. And I just frogged it. So I'm going to be reviving this yarn, re-soaking it. And this is the My Little Pony. And I thought it was just so pretty with these pinks and purples in it that I thought it matched really, really well. And it made them the Brio Duo of the Week. So there you go. And that is your Brio Duo of the Week. Okay, so let's talk about Friday night. I had tickets to the Knit Night for String Things Studio, and I also had tickets to the Knit Night with Christy Glass Knits. And I was already at the Yarn Bazaar, which was at Parish Hall, which is where the Knit Night was going to take place, and it was just too cold to go walking down the street with the baby um, to get to String Things Knit Night, and I'm so sad that I missed it. I wrote Felicia, and I apologized, because one thing I didn't like about Rhinebeck this year is that people were in all different places. I never got to see all my friends in one place. And it, it did weigh on me. It was really upsetting. By Saturday midday, I had just had it. And I will get into that. Um, but I'm really sorry that I missed the Nene because I think it was wonderful. I hardly got to see Gigi this weekend. And, you know, these are my people that I love. And so... I am very grateful, though, at Christie's Knit Night, I got to see the Chelsea Pearls, and I got to meet a lot of you viewers, and I got to spend time with um, Amy from Knit Collage, and, um, you know, just my, my girl Vanessa, Vanessa Reyes, and her mom, because I had two tickets to the KGK Knit Night. My mother and I were going to go, and then my mother, again, did not feel well, so she didn't come. So I told Vanessa she could have a ticket thinking her mother wasn't coming to Rhinebeck either. And then her mom said, I want to go too. So we tried to find a ticket. And Rhinebeck West, which is, um, you guys should just go look at it on Instagram, Rhinebeck West, at Rhinebeck West, they had an extra ticket to a knit night and they were giving it away. And I, like, innocently entered a contest and I got picked. And so I had that ticket for her and I'm very, very happy about it. So we all got to go. Um... Red Bank Mike was there, which was so fun, and he was conducting his, um, he and Meg from Woolen Cookies and Christina from Chelsea Yarns, they were having a cookie contest, so I made gingerbread pumpkins, and, and I won one of the prizes, and I was so, so, so excited, but they, there were so many people there, I could not, I, I mean, at that point, the baby was melting down, I could not get to the stage to accept my prize, so I wanted to show you guys what I got, and I'm so very thankful, I believe... Um, I'm not sure who the prizes are from because I'm sorry I wasn't listening. I think they're from Chelsea Yarns. And Christina is so wonderfully generous to me on a daily basis. Um, but this is, again, another Tanny, Tanny Casey 
bag. Here is her label. I'm going into it. See, Tanny Casey. Can you see it? There we go. That's my bag that I just won. This is not your bag. I won this bag. No, no. Actually, this little one helped me make the cookies that won the contest. So, yes, it is your bag. But guess what? I think I might give it to Mima because Mima likes blue. Is that okay? Yeah, because then we're, cause then she'll share her, my winter bag. She's going to make you a sweater so she can use this as the project bag. Okay. Okay. So the project bag says knit on it. It's, um, it's like sewn onto it. These bags are so very good. There's canvas inside, like a thick, thick canvas. There's a big pocket for your notions. And there is a clip that comes on and off if you don't want it on or you do want it on. And I won it and I never win anything. So I won a ticket to the knit night and then I won the cookie contest. Ha! Ah! I mean, I never win anything. So it was so exciting. What? You didn't win the contest. I didn't win the contest? Who won the contest? Me! <laughs> Fine. Just yes, well. I kind of took out the cookies that she made because she likes things. And I just put in the ones that were still sanitary. <laughs> um, and I probably would have had more for the knit night if I had, ch had a chance to go shopping at all that weekend before and put some food into my hotel room because I was starving and I ate a whole layer of the cookies the night before. They're so good. Guys, if you want my gingerbread cookie recipe, please DM me. I will give it to you. I think it's an old Betty Crocker recipe from like the 60s or 70s. It's on this tattered piece of paper. But the way that I do it is, is it is just good. They're just good. I've been making them for years and years and years. And so it's like the best dough. And it's really good to eat when it's like right out of the fridge because there's no eggs in it. Anyway, this is my prize, and that was the knit night. And, um, yeah, the baby slept through most of the knit night also and then had a meltdown you at the end. You in the contest or when I was the contest. I heard you. Fine. You can have the prize. <laughs> okay. So that was Friday. Um, after that, I think, I'm trying to think, it ended around 10. And then we went home, and again... Took a shower, did my hair. I don't know, I really like doing my hair when I have no one else is around. Like the baby was sleeping and I was like, ah, oh, this is nice. I'm not under the gun. I can take a really long shower right now. So, okay. This little runt is running around my, my <laughs> attic, finishing my sentences. And um, I am trying to get through this. But Saturday morning we woke up and time for New Jersey sheep and wool. And I know that Christy was doing her steak and streak really, really early so that people that had prepared cardigans could cut them and wear them to the festival. And, um, so I don't know. I had some, some problems with New Jersey, New Jersey, New York sheep and wool this year. It wasn't the festival's problem. It was just that, as I said, all my friends were in all different places and I never felt like I got to see everyone. And we left for the fairgrounds around 1130 and didn't have so by the time we got into the festival, it was about 12.30, and I don't know, I just, I made a beeline for Hello Mellow Handspun, and the first thing that I did was went and looked for Amanda Solomon's stuff, because I know she only brings a certain amount because she hand makes everything from literal scratch, like takes it off the sheep and puts it into, makes it yarn. So I knew that I wanted this bat. She made this bat and um, I was, told, was telling Christy to get it for me if she could, cause I thought it was gonna be at the yarn bazaar. And she's like, when did you become a spinner? And I was like, oh, I don't spin. I'm just gonna put it in an apothecary jar and look at it because it's gorgeous. So this is the bat that I got. And it's sparkly and it's purple and there are bits of stuff in it and I love it. And I don't normally love bats, but seriously, it's gorgeous. Thank you. I'm gonna go away. So let's take it out and look at it. <gasps> it it looks like sparkly cotton candy. Doesn't it? Yeah. Oh my god, I love it. I love it. It's. <gasps> can, I, can I smell it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you dropped it on the floor, babe. This smells like candy. Does it? Yeah. 
Okay. So I just thought this was like absolutely beautiful. And I really, I just going to put it in a jar. That's it. I'm just going to put it in a jar and I'm going to keep it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that, you know, Amanda, as someone who makes these beautiful bats, doesn't really like to hear that someone's just going to put it in a jar instead of spinning it into yarn. But I can't help it. It's exquisite. I just want to stare at it all day long. And I like putting things in apothecary jars. See? Those are all my minis. I like glass jars. So this was Amanda Solomon's bat again, and I just was so happy that when I got there, it was still there. I knew that it, it probably would be gone, crinkle, crinkle, and um, it wasn't. And I was really happy about that. So I bought some more of her yarn, and I bought this, which is, this is fabric yarn. And this is also Amanda Solomon's, and this is fantastic. Guys, I mean, come on. Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. And I was playing in the booth with Caddy Jacksnitz. Those two ladies were there, and one of the ladies kept going, I like everything you're picking up. And I was like, yeah, but they're one of the kind, so it kind of stunk for her. <laughs> I did put some stuff back. I hope she got some good stuff. But um, I also got this. Can you see the texture on this? It's insane. It's so good. I don't even know what these things are made out of, but... Okay, and oh. then I got one of these, which is from Alex Creates, because it's just, it's my color, right? Isn't this my color? And I just love it. Mm -hmm. So that was my haul from Hello Mellow Handspun. Mm -hmm. And it was Alex Creates and Amanda Solomon, and they are yarn husband and wife, I think. So <laughs> happy to always buy from a nice, happy, yarny couple. <laughs> Okay, and I'm trying to think, because I really did not buy a lot of stuff at New, New, uh, oh, thank you. New York Sheep and Wool. <laughs> My daughter is cutting apart this yarn right here. It's like chenille yarn, and I don't know why I bought it, so she's having fun cutting it into smithereens, and I'm going to be finding that in my yarn attic for years to come. Um, what else? So after that, I was like, you know what? I just want to go find some of my friends. And I saw Christy doing her Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater video. And um, I found Vanessa and I found Cece and I got a falafel. And then we went up onto... Oh, I did not get a falafel then. Um, I knew that I wanted to be ready for the picture for the LYS Unity Cal. So I headed towards the Cider Donuts Hill. But... The baby had like a meltdown um, around one o'clock and I had to take her out of the stroller and feed her and do all that. So I missed Denise Beron's meetup. I missed the podcaster meetup and I was just really bummed. So that is why I just headed over. So that was sure to not miss the LYS Unity Cal picture, but Christina had said that it was gonna be on the hill and I said it was gonna be at the Cider Donuts and um, I was wrong. We should have done it on the hill because then I would have gotten to see everyone because everyone was on the hill. And I was looking at pictures and everyone was there. And so I missed it. And I'm, you know, I'm, I had a great weekend with the baby. She slept through everything. She wasn't difficult. Um, it's tiring being with a three month old alone for four days, but I was really proud of myself that I did it. But, you know, we, uh, we got a picture for the Unity Cal. I think there were 10 or 12 people in it. So anyone that I messed up and missed the picture, anyone who missed the picture, it is my fault and I am so very sorry. Um, Christine and I are gonna be pulling prize winners very, very soon, so I'll talk more about that on the next episode. But after we took the picture, then I went to get a falafel. I saw Corrado, I saw Cece, I saw um, Hub City Fivers, and I saw, I don't know how, I just saw a wonder, bunch of, wonderful bunch of people. Franny has left the attic. <laughs> I love my kid, but my God, she's a babbling brook. <laughs> um, so then I was just all alone. Uh, a lot of people started leaving because I get there kind of late because, um, you know, I don't want to really want to fight the traffic, but I do get there sometimes as people are leaving. So around, you know, 2.30, 3 o'clock, Vanessa and her mother packed it in. Everyone had their little groups. And since I was in a hotel room alone, I was kind of alone. I didn't really have a group. Um, Christy was working, you know, a lot of my friends are, you know, celebnities, so they, um, they were doing their thing, and, um, I just kind of walked around alone for a little while. I went to pick up the bag, which my mom had pre-ordered for New Jersey, for New York Sheep and Wool, and, um, this is the bag. It was a really great bag this year, I have to say. They did a whole, um, you know, because it's the 50th 
anniversary of Woodstock and Woodstock is right there in upstate New York. And so this is the bag. See, I thought it was really great with the VW bus and all the sheep and it's a huge bag. Um, I don't know that I, I don't get these every year, but my mother wanted one. So I have two of them. I have to give it to her, but I mean, it's a big, big bag. These are big. So, oh yeah, there's the bottom. I was like, what? Does it have the bottom? Ugh. I can't even open it. There we go. God, this is huge. Look at that. The big bag. So you have to go to this place called like the dairy or the milk barn or something. And I went to do that and I had the falafel in one hand and it's getting all over me and the baby and it was just a mess. So I tried to vlog as best possible. I did not do a good job. Um, so I headed over and I said I wanted to get a little bit more loopy mango because let me show you my Rhinebeck sweater. It was the Loopy Mango, her cardigan, and I did put a collar on it from one of the different, uh, from one of the other cardigans that they have um, called the Recluse cardigan, which is only available in the Loopy Mango book. So normally if you buy the yarn, you get the pattern for free or you can buy a kit. You can buy it separately, you can buy a kit. I bought it, um, I bought it as a kit. And I, I bought it as a kit for the recluse cardigan, which was nine balls, but I ended up knitting the her cardigan, which was only seven balls. And so I put this big collar on it, but it's not big enough for me. So I picked up some more. And so I went over to Loopy Mango. Um, they give you these really, really nice bags. I mean, you know, anything that's not plastic is my favorite. So Loopy Mango, I got two balls of this because it was the same dye lot as my sweater, which I'll show you in a second. So two of these. I really love it. It's the mustard colorway, but it really does look more of a saffron. And then since I'm going to be knitting that coat with the big loop, I needed the fifties. So I got the 50, um, I think, are they 50? It's a US 50, the needles. Yeah. I'm not sure what millimeter it is, but they're huge and you could kill a vampire with them. Just how I like my knitting needles. Um, yeah, 25 millimeters. Okay. And what I like is they come in this little packet, which I like because when I bought the, um, the kit, they came with the needles just thrown in the bag. It came with a really big canvas bag, but it did not come with the plastic. And I, again, I'm trying to eliminate plastic from my life, but I like them for, for storage purposes, not for disposable purposes. So this is my Rhinebeck sweater. Um, I did not, I finished it the night before and I just bound off cause I ran out of yarn, but it's more like a coat. It's like a blanket coat. I mean, whoo, this thing is hot. And when I saw the ladies, one of the ladies, I think Anna said to me, you knit it really tight. And I did, I knit it very tight because don't be fooled by the models that are in their book. They're very, it's, she's very skinny. And if you are not as skinny as she is, which I am not, um, the sweater that looks big on her, is not going to be as big on you. So this is what happened. Um, my sweater is just, uh, it's not tight by any means, but it's definitely not as big as it looks in that picture. So let's see, let me show you. Okay. So this is my cardigan. See at the ends here, I want to make this a little bigger. So I might pick out the bind off. I did a very, very loose, just plain, bind off, nothing fancy. Um, but I think I want it to be bigger and just out to the sides, but I really don't know how much heavier this sweater can get because it's a very, very big, heavy sweater. But, um, the sleeves I made a little bit longer. I put about four or five more rounds in it than were called for because I could tell it was tight on my shoulder. See, if you knit loosely, it's going to droop more and the shoulder is going to be much further down your arms. So then this has to be shorter, but for me, since it was up further, I just made the sleeves a little longer. And so that is my sweater. See, it has all that on it. It is, it was perfect, perfect sweater weather at Rhinebeck. Perfect, perfect sweater weather. Everyone was walking around in the sunlight, taking pictures. I had my sweater on over my Bowie shirt. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot all of my, um, to show you all of my Shelly can stuff that I got at India Untangled. Well, I'll have to do that soon. 
Um, but I, this is my Rhinebeck sweater, and guys, I do recommend Loopy Mango. I also recommend buying a Gleaner because it is starting to pill because it's basically just roving with like a little bit of nylon around it, see? But it is so very soft. So if you wanna knit something thick and quick, for a child, for any of your friends, I think that Loopy Mango is the only yarn brand, besides maybe Knit Collage, that I would knit for a friend because it's nice and thick and very, very quick. So I'm very proud of my cardigan. Okay, I'm gonna go get the Shelly Can stuff so I can show you everything because this shirt is a Shelly Can and I wanna talk about it. Okay, let's take off this mama. It is so warm, seriously. Um, Okay, so let's talk about Shelly Can. I'm sorry that I have to go back to this and then I'll go back. Um, I probably could change the editing, but it'll just be all disjointed. So I forgot to talk about Shelly Can when I was at, talking about Indie Untangled, and I love Shandy, Shelly Can, just like all of us do. Um, so I grabbed some stuff from her. First up was this shirt. See, it says Rhinebeck. And Rhinebeck 2019 and everything was a takeoff on the fact that it's the 50th anniversary of Woodstock and so a lot of her stuff that she did was um Woodstock related and so I got I never buy t-shirts guys never like I have I have her yarn snob t-shirt but that's it then I bought this one which is a takeoff on the Woodstock um the little bird sitting on the on the guitar handle for Woodstock, that's their logo. So it is a little sheep sitting on the yarn. And I love that. And guys, her shirts, super long. They're so long. Look at that. Because we wear leggings and leggings are not pants. And you should cover your tush when you wear leggings. Unless you have really great self-esteem, which I do not. So just saying, that I usually cover my tush when I wear leggings. And I love, love, love that her shirts are so, so long. Look at that. They're so long! So, um, I also like to tie them in little knots. Ugh. See what I do? I tie them in a little knot. There you go. If, you just, if you're wearing jeans and it's too long, you tie them in a little knot. Learned that in the 90s. <laughs> then I got another yarn snob pin because I really, really love her yarn snob line. And I want to put this on my denim jacket because Bonnie, you guys know Bonnie? She wears that denim vest that has a bazillion pins on it. It gives me life and I need to do a little bit of that. So some pins are on my denim jacket, just a very few. Um, I have an Aerosmith pin, a David Bowie pin, and then a Night Knitter pin and my Cranberries pin because Cranberries forever. And then, so the, I also got this, which is another one of her logos for this year. Um, it says right back in the window and it is a VW bus with yarn on it. And I thought I had picked up the last one and then they reloaded it. So I was like, okay, good. Cause it was still the first time slot. I'm glad I didn't buy the last one, but I don't know. I was kind of excited to like, you know, get the last one. Anyway, I bought stickers of it. One for me and one for the winner of the LYS Unity Cal because I'm putting together my prize pack. And then I love this because I did not finish my Rhinebeck sweater. So this is my Rhinebeck sweater still sitting in a bin waiting to be finished. It will be next year's Rhinebeck sweater and you guys will have to hear about the Portage Cardigan for another year. Poor you. <laughs> Anyway, that is my Shelly Can haul. I just really, really love her. I think she's extremely talented. She's so funny. If you don't follow her, follow her on Instagram. She's just really, really funny, like inappropriately funny sometimes, which is like the best kind of funny. <sighs> and then I got one more t-shirt at the Yarn Bazaar. I got a cake t-shirt because my friend has a new yarn company and I support and I like cake. I'm really more of a pie person, but you know, we don't wind our yarn into pie, we wind it into cakes. So I got a cake t-shirt and that is that, that is, let's go back to the other Rhinebeck. Okay, okay, so now we're at Rhinebeck. Picture it, Rhinebeck, 2019. Um, I got my falafel, I got my, my bag and I'm walking around and I get to Loopy Mango and a woman starts in on me about vaccinations. Now, 
whether you vaccinate or don't vaccinate, it's your business. I have very strong opinions on vaccination. I'm not going to share them here. Um, I do vaccinate on on schedule as I'm supposed to. And I mean, I understand that we all have our own opinions on it, but I do not need to be spoken to at a festival about my child and your opinions on vaccination. So it kind of ruined my day. And after that, I was kind of like, should I have a three month old here amongst all these people? And I, she was perfectly safe. I asked my doctor, you know, and everything. And no one was allowed to touch her, as you guys know, because everyone came up to me and said, I'm not going to touch her. And I was really, really thankful for that. Um, and truthfully, even people that were my very, very close friends, they hardly touched her this weekend. So don't take offense to it in any way. I think only two or three people other than myself held her at all this weekend. So um, I was very protective of her. But that woman that, that got into my face about, about vaccinations, um, I just, I kind of, it turned me off and I just kind of left the festival. I just was like, I'm done. Um, none of my friends are really available to sit and knit with. I just kind of want to see all my friends. And, I, and it wasn't really happening. So I just kind of gave up. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go home. And I'm going to regroup because I'm not in a good mindset right now. And I'll go tomorrow. Because I really like Sunday at the festival. I went last year. It's a much smaller crowd. Um, you can get into the booths. You can buy what you want. Everything's restocked. Really, I mean, they don't really sell out these booths. These, these booths are prepared. So if you think you need to get there to get something, I mean, unless they have something special edition, I would say you're always going to find wonderful yarn no matter what time of day and no matter what day you go. I did not get to Neighborhood Fiber Company. I did not get to so many places that I really wanted to go. So Sunday when we woke up, I packed up the baby and I packed up my car, which was not easy. I strapped her to my chest and I packed up the car. And I said, okay, let's go back to the festival. We'll go back for like another couple hours and just, you know, eat the things I can never get close to because of the long lines. I'll go see Gigi and Cece and Shelby and all of my besties and... Um, the minute we started to leave the parking lot of the hotel, it started to rain. And I was like, just completely defeated. I thought, you know, if it was just me, rain on me. I don't care. I'll put on a poncho. I have no shame. I don't care. But I had my three month old kid with me and I, and she doesn't like to wear hats. She really kind of wiggles and takes them off. And, um, you know, it was raining. It was 50 degrees. And I just thought, no, I cannot do this with a three month old. So I drove home and I, I was very, very upset driving home because I feel like my Rhinebeck experience this year was not like what Rhinebeck dreams are made of. And, um, you know, you look forward to it all year and I got to hug and meet and, and have fun with so many people. And maybe it was the fact that I had a three month old with me. Maybe it was, I mean, she was amazing. She slept through the yarn bazaar. She slept through Indian Tangled. She slept through most of Rhinebeck. Um, very rarely woke up screaming and wanted a bottle or something. So, I mean, I can't really say it was her. Um, you know, I would get ready at night. I would take my showers. So I just had to wake up, put my makeup on. I had everything down to a T. Um, so I can't really say it was her, but it might've been, it might've been her. And you know, my, my poor mom was sick this year and I really was, I was looking forward to going with her and my father was going to come and I really enjoy hanging out with my parents. They're very fun people. <laughs> they made a very fun person, <laughs> you know, <sighs> but, um, I like that outing, you know, with my family and they were too sick to come this year. So unfortunately it was just me and maybe it kind of just got to me. And maybe it's because it was the first day of my period, because let's just face it, that day sucks. But too much information. Guys, come on. Really? We're not 11 anymore. We don't have to be embarrassed of this. It affected my whole weekend. I did not feel great. And that's what happens. And so this year was just a little bit of a wash. Um, and next year I'm going to stay with my friends. And if my parents come, then I'll stay with them. See, it's, it's like a catch 22. Like I want to stay with Christy in the house because her house is gorgeous and I'd love to spend time with my friends and everything. But I do like staying in the hotel also because I like the people that I stay in the hotel with. Like for Thursday night, after I dropped Gigi off, I got to see Cece and um, Julianne and 
Shanna from Lambstrings Yarns, and I love our little knit nights on Thursday night. And I also love grabbing a Wendy's single combo with everything except onions. Um, and there is a Wendy's right next door. So you turn to come off the Rhinecliff Bridge, there's a Wendy's, and then there's the hotel. And I really like that Target is right there. And you know, because I'm away from home, so if I need anything, it's all right there. So I don't know, I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to do next year. Um, I do think it would be fun staying in a house, so I may do that. But we'll see. I don't know. I think I, I did so great. I got so much good stuff. Um, you know me. I'll probably destash it half of it. <laughs> but um, I want to just to just show you something that I've been working on. So this is not Rhinebeck related. That was my Rhinebeck experience. I got a big bag of McDonald's on the way home. Obviously, I am trying to clog my arteries. But... It was the best McDonald's I had ever tasted. And I had, so I had Wendy's two nights there. And then one night, Saturday night, I ate as well as I could. And then um, they had, there's a buffet in one of the supermarkets nearby and I had that. And then, yeah, you know, driving home on Sunday, I was just feeling all the feels and I got a double, a two cheeseburger combo from McDonald's because that's what I wanted. And I got their soft baked cookies, which are actually really good. So I ate disgustingly this weekend. Mm -hmm. But I have an idea for a new design. Um, a lot of people were telling me that they wanted to knit the Portage cardigan like I'm knitting and they're just very nervous about it because of the stitches and they're not familiar with it. And, um, you know, it's a very easy pattern to read, but you do have to sit there for a second, let it sink in and kind of click. So when I was knitting the raglan increases, I think that was pretty difficult for me. So again, this is the, um, Portage cardigan, um, and it was supposed to be my Rhinebeck sweater, but I thought it should be on the video because I did actually, considering I had a three month old, I think I got pretty far, considering I had a newborn, let's face it. So, um, but the back is really, the back is the whole sweater. Like it is the beauty of the sweater. So that is the, um, the honeycomb pattern back there. And some people were telling me that they really just didn't understand the honeycomb pattern. And so I thought, well, I could do a tutorial on it. I mean, but it's not really, it's not my pattern. So should I be doing tutorials on patterns that are not mine? I don't know. I don't know what the etiquette is on that. Um, I guess if it helps to sell patterns, you're just helping the designer, but I don't really consider myself someone who could do that. So I came up with a little design and it's just for a cowl that you can knit in any weight you want. Um, that's anything bigger than DK, so DK and above. And it has the stitches from the back of the sweater in it. So it's not, you know, a ripoff of the part at Portage, but it does have the stitches so that it is my design and that I can explain them all to you guys. And then you'll be familiar with them if you decide to knit the Portage cardigan, which I highly recommend because I am loving the knit right now. So I haven't come up with a name for this yet. Um, it's obviously golden and it's got honeycombs and things on it, but it, this is the, um, the cowl that I'm, I'm knitting. And it's kind of like, it's in set up in four quadrants. So if you're looking at it like this, there's honeycomb and a cable, honeycomb and a cable, honeycomb and a cable, and honeycomb and a cable. So you're really repeating yourself four times on every round. And um, it's just a four row repeat, you know, honeycomb, you're opening the honeycomb, then you're going to do a knit row, then you're closing the honeycomb, and then you're doing another knit row. It's super simple. Um, and it teaches you how to do a two by two cable right there. And these are one by one LCs and one by one RCs. And if you don't know what those stitches are, this pattern will tell you. So I'm trying to finish this so that I can photograph it and get it out to you guys if you're interested. It's a slow and steady knit. It's not something super quick that you'll finish over a weekend, probably take you a couple weeks, but it's a nice portable knit if you're not a sock knitter. And um, I'm really proud of it. I think it's gonna be great. So it looks really small on the needles, but it stretches a lot. Um, and I thought, this is DK. I'm, I'm knitting it up in Favorite Leather Boots by Chelsea Yarns. It's Chelsea Lux. And I just really love it. Um, it will have instructions in the pattern. If you can see here, I put stitch markers every four stitches because then if you've done the cable correctly, you can see it. And if you've done it wrong, you can see it right away because tinking cables sucks. So I just wanted to, um, this is how I knit lace and that's how I knit cables. Um, so it's, you know, it's eight stitches for the cable and then 
four stitches everywhere else and then another eight stitches and I, I tell you how to set it up and everything but just have a lot of stitch markers ready now how I do it is I do pink stitch markers these are red green and orange so each quadrant has a different color so as you're going around you know that when you hit the pink again you're at the beginning of the round and you have to change over to the different type of row that you have to knit and so guys i don't know if you do this but i definitely do it with stitch markers i'm always always changing the colors so that i can see when i'm getting to the part where i have to think about something so um so that's my little design that's coming along there. Um, I don't know. I'm probably going to give it a name that has something to do with Bowie because that's me. Probably like the Golden Years Cowl or something like that. I wanted to do something with honeybees, but there are so many honeybee cowls out there. So many. And they're beautiful. As I was looking through them to make sure that this um, pattern is, is somewhat original, I, um, I came across so many things that I want to knit. It's hysterical. So that should be coming out to you guys fairly soon. I want to get it out before Vogue and I was going to try and get my other sweater and pattern out before Vogue. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. I may have a prototype knit up so I can wear it there, but I don't know if I'm going to have the pattern out. Um, question, and I'd like you to comment down below. Please tell me how you would feel about purchasing a sweater pattern that doesn't have any sizes. And and let me explain. Um, I know that there is a lot going on in the community right now about size inclusion, and I don't know how to grade a pattern. So since my pattern is going to be basically a rectangle that's repeated, you can determine how many you wanna do this way and how many you wanna do top to bottom. So it's fairly customizable, um, is that's a word, um, I would just say, you know, measure yourself and you'll know how many repeats to do across that way and then measure how long you want it to be. So you can either do a crop version, you can do a boxy version, you can do a long dress version, and it's all up to you. And I would have instructions inside on how to determine the size that you want to make. So it wouldn't have small, medium, large, extra large, because who am I to determine what makes a medium, what makes a large? I think that everybody has different measurements and everybody wants something to fit differently. So I was thinking that I would just put instructions in there on how you can make it fit the way you want it to fit your body. And I don't know, it would take a little bit of math, but I guess we're always doing math, right? And figuring out what size is right for you. So. Please tell me how you would feel about that. I think that for this particular pattern, it would work. Um, not if I'm doing like a raglan with all these increases and this and that, but if you're knitting a front panel and a back panel that are identical, and it really just matters, you know, how wide the front panel is and then how long it is, I think that's something that you guys could determine yourself. I would just give you the chart for the repeat and um, the gauge, and I think it would be super simple. So please let me know how you feel about that. I liked it because I thought someone who's super tiny but wants it long, someone who's larger and wants it short or long could customize it so that at the end when you're done knitting this beautiful garment, it fits you the way you want it to fit. So please give me your, your, your comments on that. Um, so basically I would just release the pattern with the numbers in it being blank and you would fill in your own number. Um, or I could release it with mine that I would be knitting the prototype with, and then you would just replace my numbers with your own. And I don't think it's going to be some number-riddled pattern where you're doing it every two seconds, you're changing the number, so it wouldn't be confusing. So comment below. I want to know what you guys think. Anyway, I think that's it. I know that as soon as I turn this camera off, I'm going to think of something else that I wanted to tell you, and... Um, and, and I just can't think of it right now. So I hope you enjoyed watching. I'm sorry about the beginning shenanigans. I hope whoever went to Rhinebeck had a great time. And if you are planning on going next year, make your reservations soon because I bet you they're already full for next year. So um, yeah, get into a group, get into a house, and I will see you there next year. But guys, now we are thinking about Vogue, and I love Vogue Knitting Live. I already have my hotel room. I have tickets for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the marketplace, and I want to just sit and knit with you guys. So, are you coming to Vogue Knitting Live? Let's talk about it. Are we knitting shawls for Vogue Knitting Live? Are we knitting sweaters? What are we doing? Um, I just want you guys to thank you guys for tuning in. Everyone I got to hug at Rhinebeck was wonderful, and um, I will talk to you guys soon. I'm going to try to podcast more, like usual. 
<laughs> all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Sorry about the shenanigans with Franny at the beginning. I hope you had a good laugh. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.